So let's do that. Where did we leave off? 13, 12 on day four. We've got a skill point, apparently. Nope, just kidding. We just spent a skill point, I think. But, uh, yeah, looking fine. Waiting, of course, to confront the pigs and get my gun back. That uh, we got to wait until 2200 tonight to be able to do that. That might be the way that we uh, round things out tonight. Oh, of course, we got the new pry bar from uh, Suna. Or whoever it was that, I think it was Suna, that gave us the super pry bar. So let's go over to the ice cream maker and see about opening that up. And, of course, last time we found out that there's a peephole back here in the back of this area is uh, storing old pinball machines. So that's interesting. We've, we've come across quite a few developments. And, yeah, you can even see this now as a part of this whole thing, which I always thought this was a small room, so it felt odd that it loaded up that tiny little area every time we came up there. Now it makes sense. All right. I don't think there's anything we can do in my room at the moment. I think I'm just going to go ahead or uh, go ahead and head right over to the ice maker. Ice cream maker. Pop that sucker open and find out what's inside. Bet it's a dead body. Bet we find another one and yet another mystery is tacked onto the ever-growing list. I just can't stop myself from solving mysteries. Hey, Bear, I'm an iron worker, and one of your hoodies has been seen on some of the tallest buildings in Cleveland. Yo. Rep it, my dog. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's the best kind of branding. At the top of buildings that can't be seen from down below. So they have to squint and wonder, what's that cool-ass hoodie? Boy, I wish I could get one. Guess what? You can, viewer. Try to crack open the lid. You slip your fingers under, but it's too frozen. Oh, of course. Yeah, we got to get the actual tool out. I forgot about that. Okay, where's the super pry bar? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the multi-tool. It's, it's, uh, it's a big old square. What in the world? Okay, I guess that's what we need to use. Good. Heroic. Crack open the lid. Better grip with gloves. I still have a terrible chance of actually opening this up. I thought for sure this would help. When we unplug the machine, is it off? Maybe I accidentally turned it back on. No, it's... I mean, it's unplugged, so of course it's off, you idiot. Um... Well... Okay. That kind of blows. Physical instrument. I'm not sure if there's really many ways that we can boost that up. I thought for sure we'd have a better chance. Well, I can wear the white tank top. Okay, so that's a small bonus. That helps us out a little bit. And then nothing else, I'm assuming. Well, that's better than nothing, right? Oh, wait, here we go. Ah, it's the same thing, though. I'd just be replacing my other shirt. Well, again, better than nothing. Yeah, we do have a lot of clothes already. It's a lot of options. That was a big boost, actually. All right, let's give it a try. Ice squeaks beneath your Kvalsen multi-tool, but your fingers slip away from the tool. The lid shut as tightly as before. It's already unplugged. There's not much else to do other than wait for it to defrost or bulk up and get stronger. Well, shit. That sucks. Uh, well, you can't even see the shirt I'm wearing right now, so I guess it doesn't really matter that much. That's, uh, that's gonna eliminate that option for now, I suppose, though, until we spend another skill point in physical instrument. But if I'm gonna do that, I might as well go ahead and do all the other physical instrument checks that we've been for, uh, putting off since I feel like such a weakling. Sleeping dock worker, for example. Where's that? Where the hell is sleeping dock worker? I didn't even realize that was a thing. Well, I guess I could go to the dock and try to find him. But uh, what else could I do besides wasting time trying to go for pointless skill checks? I should, let's see, let me think about what I need. I left off in a weird place with uh, 
with the lorries, I think. The missing insects case as well. Found out the real reason why the Oh Kuno! We gotta go talk to fucking Kuno. Kuno, what'd you do with the locust, pal? Time to fess up. By the way, Kift is a racial slur. Okay. Uh, stop using that word. It belongs in the past. Can't tell Kuno what words to use. He imbues the last syllable with a special kind of joy. What is this, a word museum? You want to belong in a museum, Kuno, with the old people? Fuck you. Kuno says it if he wants to. Kuno's dad says it all the time. It's a cool word. Little one sputters. It's a little engine that's come alive on the other side of the fence. An engine that only says that word that I refuse to say, even though I've never heard it before. I want to buy the pants. No, I don't think I want to do that. You wouldn't happen to know anything about missing locusts. No, Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. So he knows locusts are bugs. Told you that shit is lame, says the little one. Shut up, C. Now they're going to take you to lame prison. She sounds like she's about to cry out of disappointment at Kuno's newfound lameness. Oh, they're all just made for this game? Okay, good. I mean, I'm, I'm terrified no matter what. What's this about? Deny everything, Kuno. You need to lawyer up. Kuno's not going to say anything without his lawyer present. There's definitely something going on here. Remember his pig's head shack? You should check it out. That's probably a good idea. Yeah, that's probably where we'll find some stuff. Thanks, intuition. Let's go look in there. Plus one physical instrument, though, Bear. Are you suggesting I beat Kuno over the head? It's crawling with locusts in here. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been, has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants? Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. The lieutenant looks around, writes something in his notebook, and turns to you. Of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case, so... That's going well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I feel we're nearing a real breakthrough. You think the Insulinian Phasmid is nearby? If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. The Phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The Phasmid doesn't exist. But what do I know? Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The phasmin is impairing your judgment. Yeah, I am doing a pretty fine job handling the Kuno side of things, aren't I? You're so close to assembling the full Adidas tracksuit. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've not even been paying attention to that uh, clearly what should be a prioritized side quest. But you're right, aren't you? Yeah, I've got the gloves. I've got the the gloves. Oh, wait, no, no. I've got the windbreaker. The hat. Oh, man, you're right. I'm so close. I'm like three for five. I'm assuming some, some shoes are in order. There's nothing to do with those anymore either. I don't think the footprints. Fuck, there's cool no key. I know you took the locusts from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah, Kuno took the bugs, so what? So it wasn't the Phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. I was really hoping it would be the Reed Phasmid that ate the locusts. You say you don't give a fuck about bugs, then you go and build a whole bug town. It's not bug town, it's the city of locusts, he says, enunciating every syllable. City of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Stop! She wells from behind the fence, then buries her face in her hands. You stop! It's like they're fucking night. Locust City, Night City, City of Rage. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again, the corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. City of Rage sounds like a cool place. Kuno, the pig wants to help you. That's how lame it is. Please just don't say you're an artist. 
Maybe I am an artist. He pushes his chest out. You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. Oh, you just said I. Kuno made Kuno. Kuno says whatever the fuck he wants. There are no rules here, pig. I fucking say I when I wanna, and Kuno when I wanna. Kuno's free. Kuno's free to fucking die, bitch. This is what he sometimes does when things get tense. Making an art is a worthy calling. I'm something of an artist myself. He's gonna make you totally lame in like three seconds. Don't let him, Kuno. Fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. He tears at the buttons of his shirt trying to rip them open. They don't give way. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. Welcome a leaden silence there, fills the yard. Don't want me around. I do, though. Thanks for the sub. Appreciate it very much. Bear hugs to you. That depends on the choices you make, young girl. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear on his face. Use this momentary confusion to take control of the situation. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important in the locusts are bait. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit's all lame now. C was right. The girl's face appears again just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. What's going to happen to the locust then? He's going to let him die. Ooh, okay. What does the city of locusts mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just likes to focus. Kuno just concentrates on his shit, builds shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. He turn, he's, turns his burning face up to the falling snow. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno's city. Now it's all fucking lame. Ha ha. The fuck are they trying to catch with the traps? The Insulindian Phasmid. Huh. He recognizes the name. Wait, you know what it is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. I mean, that's true. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. Sorry for fucking with your vibe, Kuno. Alright, nothing there. Okay. Well, I guess I can go back and talk to them about it and let them know that it was Kuno. They'd probably be keen to find that out. I might just buy the pants from him too, man. Fuck it. I kind of like the idea of completing that entire ensemble. That's a fun sub-quest. Hello. Become the Kuno. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. I had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop ste stealing the locusts. So it was just a child. He looks crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again? She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid or the missing locusts. It's something else. Yes, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can... The aging cryptozoologist breaks into a hideous coughing fit. He has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. She looks at him with tender concern. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home? You're right, you're right. He breathes carefully not to start coughing again. We can come back next season when it's warmer. There won't be a next season. Not for this. Find the phasmid or admit defeat, people. Well, industry, thank you. Appreciate that. Glad you're enjoying it, too. Hmm. I'm really feeling this is costing me time on my main investigation. It kind of is. We've come too far to quit. Let's do this. We're getting really carried away with this, aren't we? He makes a show of suppressing a sigh. Fine, it's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast, but after this... He wants you to see this tail. He wants to see this tail through as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. Really, it's too much, officer. What Morel means is we're grateful for your help. 
Here's a fresh batch of locusts. Yay! Oh, that sound effect. You should slide right down, the, or they should slide right down the funnel, and thank you again. We'll definitely mention you should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but this would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers, no question about it. Fuck yeah, dude. That's a critical mission. Okay. Another quick look at the task list. Oh, yeah. So we got to get the filament to be able to do that. No idea. Oh, talk to Titus about the door gunner mega mix to make it more hardcore. Titus, can you make my tape more hardcore? The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? Talk to Classy about the tape. Uh, she stands by what she says. Oh, no, we've... Have we already done this one? I thought I had. Oh, well. Um, she pretty much laughed it off, Titus. Fucking fuckity fucker. And what did she say then? That it's fine? People are supposed to be like that? Uh, actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. Yes, in fact, I think that she thought it was a little funny. Funny? Titus mumbles, his lips barely moving. No good goddamn psycho whore. Seems like they want to give Classy a second chance to play along, and she still didn't. All right. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then that fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Titus rubs his chin with his palm as if trying to grind it smooth. This is just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawmen? You don't have to say everything out loud. Just mix and match. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Nah, I know her. She's just a girl in over her head. Titus, she has my whole skill set compromised. She's some kind of a pro. I don't think Titus respects me enough to think that's a problem. Hey, Trudy, I'm awesome. Good to have you back, man. Hmm. She's not some helpless girl. She handled the mercenary well enough. Handled him? She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes, we all heard all about it, and the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. I think you had a lie plan, but she didn't play along. I asked for your opinion, not a bedtime story. Tell it to your grandma. This tape was the last chance for her to do what was planned. But she didn't. She knows she can't lie to us. Unlike you. Oh no, he's definitely compromised too. It's his hubris. Sadly, not much to do about it now. Fantastic. So now you remember how to do your job. I'm so sick of this piss. We should get something harder in here. Despondently glancing at his beer. Yeah, guys, we should get a party going tonight. Why? Uh, he looks at the old man in the corner. Maybe not, then. They admitted to unlawful collaboration to derail the investigation. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you we fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her Titus said, fuck off. He throws his beer can down. That lying, scamming, we're done. This is over, you understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There's a silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something, then thinks best not to. On the floor, beer drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. Bartender! 20 beers for the dock workers' union. Why don't we make it 40, huh? Why don't we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. 100 beers, now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. Convince Titus he's being manipulated. Rhetoric. I pushed Titus on the tape, which apparently was a bad idea. And I kind of thought that was a bad idea based on what it said. 
But for some reason, I just did it anyway. Let's see if I've got some rhetoric boosts. I could do some drugs again, but I'm, again, I every time I s suggest that, I mention that I'm, I'm trying to avoid it. Rhetoric, though. I'm sure we've got at least one thing that can boost that. Kind of trying to go with what I imagine would be logical, too. Although I am also just scanning everything. It's a minus one to rhetoric. There's a plus one. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Give it a try. It's you again. What is it? Nice. Convince Titus he's being manipulated? You should know by now, Titus Hardy will never falter. One of his boys will. Just remember it's about more than Classier. It's about these men in Martinez, their district, their responsibility. That's it then. Case closed. We're going home, Kim. Huh? The lieutenant raises his, br his brow. He'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. Got it. He takes out his notebook. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Because you work for the wrong people. Goddamn right, this is Union Town. We work for the company. We will kill you. Fuck, Dennis, we don't kill you if you work for the company. Half the harbor works for the company. Work for the wrong company, and they execute you. Hmm. They just hang you, shoot you, whatever. They can't even remember. It wasn't that, it wasn't... The man says, with a fat man says with a wheeze. We didn't shoot him. That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. The old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. Firearm. A Glace 08 or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's on to you. He knows what you're trying to do. Hmm. Look at Kim first. The lieutenant has put down his notebook. His hand is resting on his holster. He gives you an imperceptible nod. What does that mean? What happens if I keep talking? You're going to kill me too? In this bar? For nothing? No. You see him shake his silvery head. His calm voice is almost kind now. I'm not going to do it. I'm too old for a shot like that now. You hear that, Angus? They're gonna kill me too. Suddenly there's an awful ringing in your ears. Your body temperature spikes. You're burning all over with fear. To your right, you sense the air move. The lieutenant draws his firearm. You only manage to perform one more movement. An instinctive jerk to your left. A renewal. Then no sound. No one screams. It's impossible to say where it comes from. We disappeared. They actually just killed us. What are you gonna do, shoot me? Man who is shot. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll try that again. I didn't even get a save. It's like I literally did nothing. Man, I wish this game would auto-save more. All right, so pardon me while I do the exact same shit for the next five minutes. Ugh. There's half of me that's like, okay, I appreciate the um, risks that this game takes in being willing to just straight up murder you and end the game with no warning. That being said, did you hear the words that just came out of my mouth? 
that doesn't sound very fair or very fun when you just have to load up and do the same shit that you did for the last 30 minutes over again. So... Eh, I don't know, man! You're missing a beat! Fuck the tree up! Fucked it good! It was porno! Mm-hmm. I don't care either the second time, Kuno. It's you and me together. It encourages to do the right thing so it has benefits in its own way. Oh, completely disagree with that. Wholeheartedly disagree with that. First of all, there should be no right way to do things in this game. This game is all about facilitating your freedom to do things the way you want to. Certainly some of those decisions, it could be argued, can end in death. I'm saying with absolutely no warning, it's kind of difficult for me to feel, like, good about booting up again and being like, well, I shouldn't have done that. I had no fucking idea they were actually going to kill me. Just gonna go try to open this up again, too. Most of the time you can and should roll with failure. I agree with that. But when the failure literally ends the game, should I roll with failure then? Should I stop playing? That's, that's what you're suggesting. <laughs> you're dead, new game. Yeah, you should have done better. What the hell is the sound? Where the fuck is this music coming from? Hold on a second, are there people down here? People shuffling by on the street. It's my boombox. Oh! I <laughs> put the tape player on instead of the multi-tool. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, whoops. They look similar. Okay. I know there's one physical instrument bonus I can get, so I might as well put that on. It's the dirty tank top, I think. Might as well try it. Here we go. Okie dokie. No problem. And back out to Kuno. I got the multi-tool from the woman in the church whose name I've forgotten. You gotta have a couple of conversations with her. Osuna, that's the name, yeah. And she gives it to you after a little bit. Okay, Kuno. Fuck this Kuno kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, do that, do that, do that, do that, do that. Uh, do that, do that, do that. Do that, do that, do that. Do that, do that, do that, do that, do that. And that, 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 and that. And that, and that, and that, and that, and that. All right. Fun. Time to go back. All right, yeah, now we should buy the pants. Yeah, no, might as well. And then I'm going to save. Fuck this Kuno kid. Kuno unzips his jacket again and pulls the pants out of the plastic wrapping. Here, pig, we fall now. Performance buddies. Kuno can already see you soaring through the air like a fucking eagle. Pig and Kuno's debt now. Money debt. 
Money debt doesn't mean anything. He's just saying words. You're not in his debt. <laughs> hey, Nate. How you doing? I'm just getting over my salt for the day. Oh, let's put on some fucking track pants, baby. There we go. God, the shoes really stand out now, don't they? That's a problem. Let me get my phone gloves on, baby. There we go. Oh, we are looking slick. Clean shaven. Ready for action. I got a bow tie on, but you can't tell, unfortunately. The yellow gloves really bring the look together. Maybe I should keep them on. What's the final part of this? It's got to be the shoes, right? Who's got my shoes? Who's got my goddamn shoes? Look like I could go running forever. This is my new lifestyle, baby. Alright, we go talk to them about the phasmid real fast. Quick save again, and then go talk to Titus. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. Yay, we get to hear the locusts again. I had to cut that off real quick. All right, cool. Good. Save. All right. Hi, Titus. The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? Talked about the tape. Uh... She laughed it off, made her a little nostalgic, and I'm even gonna, knowing what I know now, I'm just not even gonna talk to him about the tape, just say what really happened. And we fucking hanged him is the uh, insistence. Same story there, your little investigation's over. Bartender, blah, 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 100 beers, hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. All right, now we actually even have a better chance of getting this. So, first of all, get my rhetoric bonus again from whatever the heck that was. I don't remember. Uh, but da -da 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 -da. Where is it? It was down here. There it is. Good. Okay. Rhetoric up. Please, game. It's you again. What is it? Be kind. Yay! Alright, one of his boys will fall. Case closed, we're going home. Kim, write it down. They'll kill you for working for the wrong people. Let's just say because of some chick. A wince. It's involuntary. Bring that up one more time and you won't get to write that report. The man's fists under the table are bald. You can tell from his neck and shoulders he means it. Yes, I understand. Elaine, that's your name, right? Elaine, you'll kill us. That's what they do in the Wild North. They just hang you like in the Dark Ages, make a display of your corpse. It wasn't that, it wasn't, the fat man says with a wheeze. We just couldn't get him down, okay? That's it, that's the weak one. You will be the next if you don't shut up. Firearm again. Uh, what happens if I keep talking? You're going to kill me too in this bar? We know they will now. Wait, let's go back. I want to say something else. The most terrible fear bigger than any before. To your right. Do they... We, we died again? Good thing I quick saved. So what happens there? What? 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 You're pressing the wrong man? This is... I don't want to complain too much, but this this seems dumb. Out of everything in this game so far, this is this is one that seems like there's only one correct choice and you just have to force your way through it. That's pretty stupid. It's you again. What is it? I did not pick the exact same options. I picked slightly different options, but I ended up having the exact same choices. So, uh, let's try because they like killing. And then it's going to be the same three here again. So, let's just try this one. See whatever the hell that does. It's going to get the exact same result. No, this is... 
We've gone through this three times now. It gets us to the exact same place basically no matter what we choose. I apparently have to pick Angus. Which, okay, now it makes sense that he's the weak one, but like... Turning to Theo is just wrong. I know it warns me, but like... Is there... Uh, is, are, I guess there's other instances probably where... One choice versus another will kill you. So, yeah. I suppose now that I think about it that way, it makes more sense. It's just less... Uh, it's less interesting. I don't know. It's just, it disappoints me but th th that it forces you down this hall when the game has been about... Like, the appeal to this game is being able to make it your own unique experience and like that's been a selling point for a lot of games in the past but this game has done it so well that's what makes it a standout so in, in moments like this it's just disappointing to me that you really don't have much of a choice we didn't kill him we didn't even hang him he was dead when he takes a breath wheezing shut up angus he was dead before you hanged him fatty say one more thing to the cops and i'll Dennis, stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. Yeah, I guess that's fair, Repiglican. You have to you have to have certain set plot points. Otherwise, you'd have to code an infinite game. That's, that's a fair point and fair way of looking at it. The room falls quiet, so quiet you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you, just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. Fine, I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast, she walks off without looking back. What just happened between these two? You're in. He's all yours. Questions. I'm sorry I made you guys fight. Oh, man. Hmm. So you didn't kill him. He was already dead. You hang the corpse to cover up the real cause of death, the bullet in his head. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls, plural. There's another one. Two of them? Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did, or at least he hopes she didn't. What happened Sunday night? Classy came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up even more than usual. Bug-eyed and, bug and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. Looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How do you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. You don't get to talk yet, Shanky. Shut up, Donnie. You're out of your element. We went upstairs. Sure as day, the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. Fucking dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He means they've been fucking. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse we hanged. Who's Tibbs? The eighth hardy? Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. So who killed the Merc then? Not, not any leads, not yet, just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside behind the window somewhere, so that's a clue. What are you thinking? Someone's past caught up with him, either hers or his. Cruise fest! It's with the 43 months on the pile. Welcome on back in, appreciate it. She's got one of those checkered pass. The shot could have missed. Could have been meant for her. I like that, I've been thinking the same thing myself. And yet ideas about his past too. I do. One of the mercenary buddies of his could have gone it, or could have done it. They got guns, training, years of bad blood, probably. 
Or it could have been someone else from Krennel. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now. Threw all that turmoil away and became himself again. If Plossia didn't kill him, why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. I didn't notice anything. What kind of shit are we talking about? But can't show up on police radar kind. There are people after her. From the old, old world where she came from. They're powerful. Connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she go showed up in her your system, she'd be ghosted away. Every time I see this, all I can think of is like some 19-year-old kid working for a big old corporation. And they ask him to do like really seedy shit. Like deliver coffee that's laced with heroin. But he's the moral intern. He can't do it, so he throws the heroin away and just gives them regular coffee. I don't know how heroin works. Moral intern. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. The moral oral intern. <laughs> the rural juror. Whose idea was it to hang him anyway? Hers? In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. Earlier you said the girls asked for your help. Was this the other girl? That's right. It was her, it was her idea to hang him. I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. It's her, isn't it? The missing eighth hardy? That's the other girl? The big guy turns to Glenn, who's about to say something. The blonde shuts his mouth before a word escapes. I'll say it again. All the Hardy Boys are right here, cop. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her anyway. You know, it's okay for there to be a Hardy girl, Titus. His face sets like concrete. He shakes his head solemnly. <laughs> we are Hardy Boys. And that's it. Sure, but can you tell me anything about this affiliate name, current location? Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. I'm sorry I made you guys fight. Me too. Kim, we did it. The lieutenant gives a smile only you can see. Thanks for this, Titus. I'll go talk to her for the last time. Hey, cop, before you go, she... Klaus here came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The union took you in, but now she refused that protection, but... Would you still prefer if we didn't take her away? That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. The lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket and turns to leave. Whew! Okay. Jesus. Sorry about that. Suboptimal approach, but we got it done. Let's continue. I believe I have a skill point now, but... No, I don't. It just keeps telling me I do for some reason, so I guess I'll just ignore that now. Okay. The victim's tattoos. Still haven't been able to find more information about that. I wonder if uh, I've got more information on the armor's owner. That would probably help us out. I should go call the uh, precinct again. Didn't die. Yay. All right. I'm wearing a tracksuit, my man. And you know what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm pretty sure I'm able to... I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to find the final piece of this. Talking to the lorry guy who uh, sells cool shit. Uh, did you find anything about the boots? Took some convincing, but I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Absolutely. I was born ready, baby. That suit of armor was issued to an Orange citizen named Ellis Cortenaire. Exact date of birth unknown. He was signed into the Lelestad County Neonatal Care Unit on the 28th of February, 09. Ugh. He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the neonatal unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. 
This is what the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the Isbran Military Academy in Vredfort at 17, then served in the Oranius forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least that's, or, or at least I assume it did, and that's it. There are no records of his employment in Cronell or any of his other incarcerations or even him entering Revishal. He was found in a leaf compactor? A garden tool used to compress leaves into cubes. It's a detail the hospital had, so I thought it'd be good for you to know. It is. Thank you, Alice. Any information on his foster parents? None. So all we have to connect him to Cornell is the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double-check their inventory. Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. She sounds pleased. A compliment from Lieutenant Kitsuragi. We have his name and service record now. Alice Cortinaire. That is pretty good. Something, sometimes police work is about human dignity, giving back names to anonymous victims. Uh, do not have any other questions. Thank you very much, Sylvie. Or, uh, Alice. I wonder if there's anything I can do with the 41st. She sighs. I'm happy to report that I have found my badge, Jules. 10-4, sir. Glad to hear that. I'll write down there's no need to issue you a new one then. Over. Great. 10-10, over and out. Well, that was pretty good. Yay. I wonder what these motherfuckers are still doing here. This palm tree livery should... I can see it. Bright as day. Ugh. We were skulls right now. Alright. They still got nothing. I think I'm gonna have to ask them who they are at some point. But authority told me to come back on my own time. I don't know what my own time is. Cool here, officer. Do you sell any tapes? No, music is out. Don't listen to music. I sell extremely cool sunglasses if you want your mojo going. So you have no idea whatsoever where I could find tapes. Tapes are everywhere. They're worthless. Kids throw them in the trees. They're in the bushes right behind this lorry. No one would ever throw a good pair of high-quality plastic sunglasses in the bushes, mister. You should have a look. It's better than nothing. In the bushes behind this lorry. Well, look at that. There they are. Never even been here. There's something over there, too. The hawthorn tree on Rue de saint Ghislaine, bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught on its branches, fluttering in the breeze. Good hawthorn. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads RCM Emergencies Desk number 8102. Underneath, a slogan. Mankind, be vigilant. I'm sure that boosted my odds of success here. Interfacing. I gotta put my gloves back on. Any more boost to that? Maybe before I finish this game, they'll patch in something that lets you sort these by boost they provide. Because I would freaking love that, man. Or just the quick ability to be able to find out what they do, because this is not ideal. Alright, let's try this out. With slow and deliberate motions, pulling, bending, and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. It curls up into a mess inside your pocket. Only you could find a way to re-spool it so you could hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop could help you with this. Only after you successfully cleaned up the branches does the curiosity get him. What's the tape for? It's for Egghead. I promised to make his Van Eyck's gem hit a, bit or hit a bit harder. Maybe this tape can help. How? It's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? I'm surprised he's not immediately discouraged by that reaction. I think at least one of the ravers would know how to fix a broken tape, but maybe Egghead can point me in the right direction. You could also get it to fix the, or fix the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. We might have the tools. Yeah. We'll go check that out. Didn't even realize this is the thing I was going to be doing here. All right. Where do you have my... Sweet you ass keep shoes. Back. That's good, officer. Keep browsing those clothes. Keep saving that economy. That's not what I need. Save the economy. Haven't you heard? We got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in circulation. Buy eco. This doesn't make any sense. Why exactly does the economy need saving? You see all these premium goods just sitting there not getting bought? We got to keep the flow of goods moving. Is it really the economy we want to leave to our children? Uh, but I don't have children. 
Too bad, officer. Kids make all the worthwhile. Without kids, we're gonna who's going to be around to enjoy the economy? Don't let me stop you. Open the box and browse a little. Hardcore! Oh, there's the phone sneakers, dude. 50 real. I gotta have them. I gotta have them. The sneakers seem to vibrate in your hands with an almost mystical energy. Okay, now let me buy the speakers. Junk's yours, officer. Happy listening. Try not to hurt your ears with that Samaritan garbage. Sweet. Hardcore. Super hardcore. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. He's got the look. Oh, hold on. It's almost complete. There we go. Oh, no. Even better. Yes! Oh, baby. <laughs> Loving it. It'd be great if there was a set bonus, yeah. I was kind of hoping that it would pop up with some sort of, like, dialogue option, like, congratulations, you have put together the tracksuit. <laughs> Tell me Kim has something to say about it. Let's find out. Yes? No, we, we still got to try to do this, though. Maybe spend a point on Inland Empire and try to convince Kim of the sexy, dark mystery while I'm wearing the sexy-ass tracksuit. <laughs> And he goes, la, 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 la. Hello there. I'm back. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Hey, you fixed this? Just holding two hands out with a bundle of magnetic tape. He looks at the bronze-colored bundle in your hand. You mean re-spool it? I, I do, but could you do it, please? This is important. I need to be able to play this tape for someone. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure, although it looks pretty worthless. Just explain why you need this so much. He's bound to understand. But you tinker with film tapes all the time. Isn't that the same? No, it's different. These film tapes actually mean something to me, but this is just a worthless bundle of old tape. Worthless? It's not worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene. What do you mean? Do you know the old church down by the coast? I met some young ravers near the place. They want to turn it into a nightclub and play some weird neo-disco beats there. They call it anodic dance music. I promise to help them with that. Is it any good, the music, I mean? No, that's the thing. You can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's nothing to it. No bass. It just goes bzoot, 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 bzoot. But this tape can make it hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. He looks at the bundle of tape in front of him. It shimmers under the shop's dazzling light show. All right, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though, so just sit back. He takes some time to look around the store, and the play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. Well, thanks for the help. Yeah, my pleasure. Just do what I can for true, tr true passion projects. Just try not to use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility, okay? Oh, I will, Roy. Super hardcore! I don't need any more of that. I don't think he's got anything else for me in here, either. Let's go! The tracksuit totally gives you dexterity bonuses. A lot of those items give you bonuses to those sorts of things like reaction speed and cyber warfare and shit. Uh, I'm gonna head over to the coast, I think. Because we did need to go over there to try to find... Um, what was it? What did I need to do? I forgot. Shit. Offer her any and all you have if you meet her in person. Oh, right, yeah. Offer figurines to Dolores Day because I'm a fucking fa or, uh, fanatic. Gotta do that. Gotta do that. Oh, right. Restock the traps. 
But first, apparently, I need to go confront Classier with, with the story. I didn't realize we were just bouncing back and forth between Classier and Titus up there. Let's do it. Don't be afraid to say weird things. You won't get shot. Don't be scared. Up we go. I am actually kind of running out of money, but I'm not poor enough to start collecting bottles again. I just spent 65 real in my tracksuit. An ill-advised purchase, maybe. Yeah, later on, mailman. Just walk past Measurehead. Yeah, no, I'm sure that'll work. I gotta beef up, dude. That's what I gotta do. So I can pass these physical instrument checks. Gonna become stronger. Hey, Colossier. It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning back against the railing. The Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. She puts her coffee mug on the table. Just like that, no resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. You don't look surprised. You were expecting us. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first between you two, then move on to questions. No, it's not good. It's the opposite of that. This will let her dictate the terms of your... Sh I can't hear what she's saying. <laughs> If you, knew what would if you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me out of the shit I'd gotten into. Is, the, is she implying the Hardy boys are the law? It's not a good enough reason. You're right, there's more. You answer to the coalition government and by extension, the moral intern. She reaches for a new cigarette. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea as she's done time and time again. What's the RCM's involvement with the moral intern got to do with this? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. What's going on? What did you do? Just business, but bad business for some bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will. What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill. Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Actually, this murder did have a little to do with her. What did you have- to, what did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal, not here in Revachal. Or even in Oranje. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. He taps on his notebook. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. The job was Lustwin County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Loosegap conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me, too. Along with Loosegap and their friends in the MI. She breathes out heavily. <sighs> Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Hmm. It's a lot of shit you've gotten yourself into. It is. Many people lost their jobs, not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I did to get to accounting. She shakes her head at the thought. A lot of people got hurt, but that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. What happened here the night he died? We were there, together in bed. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay. Uh, he was in a kneeling position, just entered me. I was on my bed, back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, shatter and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open, dumb. I could see... Okay. That's horrifying. Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. 
I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. You were right. He did enjoy the moment of his death. I would knew it. I had that intuition. But it wasn't... It's probably not appropriate to bring up right now. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor there. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow not to scream, then ran downstairs. There's a long pause. She just stands there, her arms at her sides. Then she continues. I waited for the second shot to come for me. I thought there would be one. It never came. Nor did he. <laughs> <sighs> She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. I'm sorry this happened to you. So am I. She looks down. Her cigarette has singed her fingers. She throws it away and immediately proceeds to light another one. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight... That's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line plus other things, and I was drinking. Lady Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Titus said you looked pretty high. Oh, yeah, I did one of his lines just to clear my head. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot, just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore, so I ran down and out of my room into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. What happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there, too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Before we continue, who's Ruby? Ruby, you know, the leader. The leader of what? The Hardy Boys, she says, it's as if it's self-evident. I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Rudy, Ruby's the one they go to when things happen. Like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. This ruby in her phrasing is entrusted with great power. She trusts her, so do the others. What happened then? Ruby said, let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation, but I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know. Take care of things. I helped her get the, the body to the bathroom. I used a belt to pull him up under the shower to keep him upright. To mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? Oops. <laughs> About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood. You know what it does. She looks at the ground and raises her light brown eyes to meet yours. Then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Laylee in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on, his armor too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. They'd carried him out. I knew what they were going to do, make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What, what did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while, that we should lay low or something, so I did. Where's Ruby now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We'll need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? What are you doing? Coming up with a theory. She said Ruby knew something was wrong before she said anything. How come? It was loud downstairs. She couldn't, he, she couldn't have heard the shot. It is ominous. You already coming up with theories that put the blame on someone other than Klausier. When it happened, did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud? 
This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. Did you kill Laylee? What? Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me, I know that. But I would never hurt him. Could have been a desire murder, maybe an act of jealousy? He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun lying around. Close to her hand, a military weapon using, using jacketed ammunition. Now you guys suddenly have theories pointing out when they're obviously just stabs in the dark? Downstairs people have this crazy idea that you killed him. Hmm. It's okay if you did it in self-defense. I did not kill him to defend myself from rape. I told you before that wasn't what happened. True, sire. It is true. I don't think she did it, but I'm I'm maybe falling to the same uh, traps that my own psyche is. I don't want to be like, did you kill him? What weapon did you use to kill him? Does your mom know you killed him? I'd like to answer some other questions. Could the people after you have killed him? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And I thought they'd found me. They'd killed me to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone, so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have, have anything to do with me. But maybe it did. I just don't know. I don't know anything. We can't go after Loosecap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot? The answer comes fast. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot? She's nothing of the sort. So you would have us believe, but you're not. You have to understand the people around here, no one was making the call, and he kept, he kept rotting. Then they picked his clothes off, and that little fucker threw stones at him. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob once, just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud, the thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the least last thing I do in Revishal. She definitely called the cops. That was the task complete. Could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Oh god, that was a lie too. Who made the call? <laughs> she lied about making the call. She did, of course, says Logic. Don't be paranoid, man. It's unbecoming of a police officer and it's making you sweat. When was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think Tibbs, took care of it. You have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom? Inside? Yes, you see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. Ah, indeed. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke, just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Lieutenant glances at you and then at the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or should we arrest her? She's a flight risk, and she lied to you. She should be taken into custody. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. This guy won't budge. You have to wake Multiface up forcefully if you want to continue pushing her. Apparently, I'm great at this. Okay. Hold on. I bet I could be even better. Drama boosts. Where do I boost my drama? There we go. Plus one. Up to a plus two, baby. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Give me the goods. I could do drugs again, but I won't. Don't want the minus one drama, of course. All right, that's it, I guess. Not a problem. What's this? We're getting reports of normal... Reasonable, temperate political opinions somewhere in Martinez. That's me, Mr. Reasonable. Someone's got to keep it sane around here. The air suddenly feels calmer, more transparent in a strangely tender way. Perhaps it's the hangover, perhaps it's, it's a temporary surge of serotonin, but something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience. First, where is this? It's not a place, it's a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. How do you bring these about? Incrementally. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. 
That's the genius of Dolores Day. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. But what about all the things that are wrong now? Tisk tisk. Just because you live in the present doesn't mean you have the right to place your needs above the needs of the future. You may never live to see the kingdom of conscience. Your children may not. Even your grandchildren may not. But that's no excuse not to keep working. What rationality. What sangfroid. What benevolence. Is this the kingdom of conscience really about doing things or just preserving the status quo? Do you believe the status quo is preferable to chaos and bloodshed? No. Then you've never lived through real chaos. Sometimes in the face of great disaster, defending the status quo is progress. But what's it actually like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe. Partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Sounds incredible! Wait, post-sexual? Hold on. That sounds kind of terrible. I don't think I want to be a moralist anymore. What you want is immaterial. The kingdom of conscience is coming whether you like it or not. As you look back, you think, so love did do him in after all. I was right. If it weren't for her, he would not have been there. The shot would not have connected with his soft plate. <laughs> no, don't. Don't say that. Don't. Don't do that. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Here we go. Who? What? Dear Lord, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not the most fair and just at all. She's smoking mirrors and will-o'-wisps. She probably didn't even give you her real name. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Take it easy. Don't overcompensate with this course correction. Ask questions first. Start at the bottom. Choose at the bottom. It's how we've always done it. No rush. See? Hmm. You know, I don't think you made that call to the station. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint and coughed. That is the emergencies desk number. Anyone could know that, sire, by looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. What time did you make the call? Thursday night. It was late. Sometime after 12. The lieutenant nods in your direction. It checks out. Say nothing. She stands before you, holding her back very straight. Your real name is in Classe Amandu. I agree, the lieutenant turns to her. You wouldn't give us your real name, not when people are after you. Okay. Her voice cracks suddenly like there's a garret around her neck. Okay, what? Okay, it's not. Good. You can tell me the truth. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to Commonsur. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name, so I lied. Like I've lied before, like I did at LCSB. I've had to lie all the time. She looks at her hands, her fingernails a chipped white. I'm so tired of it. Was the passport bullshit too? The passport you kept hidden? No, it's submerged in a plastic buoy on the coast in the reeds. It just doesn't say Klaus Amandu. It says, oh God, please. I was really I was begging and pleading in my head that it would be something that I, I, I would be able to pronounce. Anouk Major Smith? Yeah. Okay. Falsified documents? Passport and visa, she nods. Given to me by, by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name Major Smith to hurt me. Meyer? Meyer, okay. Meyer Smith. Anouk Meyer Smith? Close? I'll take it. Why would they do that? I didn't show up to a rendezvous. They don't take that lightly. Oh, I didn't show up to a rendezvous, and they don't take that lightly. She rushes to explain. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd 
do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. She fears an arrest right here and now. This has been an awful turn of events for her. She just told me her real name. Where is the buoy? West of the boardwalk and the reeds on the coast there. She points toward a clump of ruins on the western horizon. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. It's useless. West of the boardwalk and the reeds? We'll have to check this out. Tell me your real name again, though. <laughs> God damn it. It's just... It's been like, apparently, Classier was easy, and then I had medium difficulty in the next name that she gave me, and then, what the fuck is this? It's Catherzine Alexie. The smile on her face is timid, almost painfully so. Could it mean Classier is an alacronym for Catherzine? What is an alacronym? Classier is, a, is an abbreviation of Catherzine Alexie? <laughs> it was a sentimental thing I wanted to be more me here this time So I used my nickname A nickname? Who gave you this nickname, Classier? A teenage boy a million years ago I'll just keep I'll, I'll keep calling you Classier That's going to be easier for me, apparently She doesn't feel like a Classier She feels like nothing All right um, Kim, why have we not arrested her yet? There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She looks around. Ah, we don't need to do that yet. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath as in the presence of something... Or as if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of it. Let's get back to those lies you told. She repeats, then trails off. It's unclear what she intended to say. We demand she be punished for deceiving us. We demand her anxiety. We demand her fear. Nah, we're good. Just kidding. All done. Quick save. Okay. Well, that was a lot of information. Uh, I don't think I even changed much apart from the shirt. Cool. Let's go investigate the window. That's probably going to be a different set of skills we got to boost, though, so I'll have to look at my clothes again real quick. Visual calculus. See what we can get. We'll start from the bottom. Oh, there we go. There's one. And these last bits. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Cool. No problem. A couple points boost. 92%. My goodness. The golden light melts away into the blue glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon lit shapes. A man and a woman on a single bed. What position are they in? Like the witness said, the man is kneeling, the woman is on her back. It's the night of March 4th and a shot has just been fired. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth, a ray cast from somewhere outside entering his brain. Where's it come from? From the roof outside, location A prime. The glass fractures around the bullet hole. Shards face inwards like a cur like a Corona behind the woman's back? I thought that was a beer. What is a, what is a Corona? I'm learning so many fun words. Define Corona. Was it a crown? No, 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 no. hold on. Corona. Oh, you're right. A part of the body resembling or likened to a crown. Damn it. There's this whole gastro... Or, like, super astronomical definition for it, but... Nah, that's pretty much like a... Halo or something. Uh, anyway, inspect the ghostly figures. The man does not know the bullets have entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. 
have a look at point A, the roof. The ray casts from the man's mouth and rambles into a fan of possible directions, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime, most likely of the origin points. Shouldn't there be more gun residue outside? There could have been, then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. 72% sure the roof is where the shot was made from, with an antique weapon that fires military-grade ammunition, a Belmagrov rifle, for example. This is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. The lights were on in there. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium, a well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have been neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness, too busy with their own bodies. Could the shot have come from inside the room? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void, and these figures would be wiped out, Detective. Are there any arguments against A Prime, the roof? None that you found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Could there have been another point of origin further away? That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? Extra ex extrapolate the radius to include all of Martinez. According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B Prime. More precisely, B for boardwalk, B for land's end, and... Oh, B that for that, B that for land's end, and B three apostrophes for the islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. B1. 700 meters away, the likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. An apostrophe is prime in math. How would you, how would you say this out loud, then? B with three apostrophes. Have a look at land's end. Oh, it's double and triple prime? Okay. 1.2 1 kilometers away. The least likely of these positions, let's say 3%. The truly skilled sniper could have done it, possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. Have a look at B, point B triple prime. Islet. One kilometer away. A point beyond the docks and an islet in the bay. The fort is ruined, but the perpetrator may have found a stable spot on the beaches surrounding it where the concrete crumbles into the sea. As you saw in the coin-operated viewer. I did see that. The shot would have been in a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window between Rue de saint Cislain 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme and access to the islets is questionable. What about B-Twitch Prime? Hey, see, we never checked that, pre never checked that place out. Ken, do you think this shot could have come from further than the roof in Martinez? From where? Let's say B-Prime, B-Double Prime, B-Triple Prime. I see you've given this a lot of thought. Are those the locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what's the likelihood in your opinion that it came from a further distance? Much less than from the roof, but still. Okay, well, we should see if there's gunshot residue or sniper nests if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out one by one. It would be the diligent thing to do. Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. It fits the hidden path through the whirling. A simple hypothesis. Blink. Well, fantastic. Excellent police work. Let us proceed. Let's go talk to uh, Titus again real quick, and then we'll probably head along the coast, do a few things over there, and then we'll have to go get our gun. Yay! How exciting. I'm so glad I don't have to sleep here anymore. Hey, Trash Moo. Get to, get to saving, friend. Where are you at? How are your channel points looking? You almost to a cool million? Probably nearly there, right? It's you again. What is it? All right, I talked to Klausia. Now I need to talk to Ruby. Why? He leans back and regards you with curiosity. 
I have seen her in a laudanum-induced delirium. The paranormal instinct whispers her name into my ear. Sounds like you're making her a suspect in this. Not on my watch, you're not. Ruby's one of us. We're not going to throw her under your moral intern steamroller. Fuck that shit. And fuck you too, moral... He throws a glance at Titus as the last syllable leaves his lips. The big guy sighs. Ruby is missing. If you hide from the police in a murder investigation, you become a suspect. You know how it works, guys. That's nothing. That's just legalese. You don't even, you don't even have a sound theory. I don't want to be rude, but we're trying to get some R&R &R here. Think you could fuck off now? I think we'll keep sticking around, Titus. You'll be surprised at how quickly a theory presents itself if you keep looking. Ah, we found the secret route. Present a solid theory. Oh, we've got logic. I got logic coming out of my fucking asshole. Oh, wait. Those aren't the right things. Hold on. Logic. Hold on. There it is. Boop. Boop. Plus two, baby. Mm-hmm. All right. That'll do. Try it out. It's you again. What is it? I don't think that changed my percentage, did it? Oh, well. No, nothing's happening. The pieces are there, but they remain unconnected. Oh, we can do this. Sorry, you're not coming up with anything. Again, the pieces are there. She could have done it somehow, something else. Walla Walla Bing Bang. It's just not coming together. Walla Walla Bing Bang. I don't know what it means, but it felt like the most appropriate thing to say. That's what the witch doctor would say, at least. Why am I such an idiot? No one knows. <laughs> Squint your eyes harder. Still nothing, but that's okay. This doesn't have to turn into some kind of meltdown. You're just a cop taking your time to present a theory. Let's look at this as a learning experience. What are the components you need to implicate Ruby? No, no, he needs to say 500 of the errors, and I can't remember the first line. I just want to hear the components of the theory. Smart move. The components are access to the roof, weapons, and motive. Here's what you can do to make it easier. You've been there very thorough. There's nothing else to add. Just crack that Clossier's defense. Maybe she'll tell you something helpful. Save 500 of the errors and I can't remember the first line. No, no, nothing good will come of it. He just did the right thing not saying that the last time. Just do what the nice, helpful guys said and don't do the bad things. It's that simple. Unless we have more business, we should. <laughs> Real quick logic point. Real quick logic point. It's you again. What is it? A sudden flash of lightning in your neocortex. The hostile cafeteria is lit by its eerie blaze. Flood plans, bullet floor plans, bullet trajectories, webs of human emotion all channeled into a single thought. Why are you so sure Ruby didn't off him? So that's what you were squinting at. You were trying to come up with a theory, weren't you, that she did it? Yeah, he was cobbling together shit so he could put her away. It's RCM 101. Let old Titus set your mind at ease then. She didn't do it. She was here all night. The lieutenant opens his notes. Sunday night, 11.30 to 12.15. She was here all that time? Yeah, with us drinking. Near the stage there. She didn't go to the toilet? No. That's a lie. You know that's not the case. All right, she took a fucking leak, okay, for one moment. Maybe went out, too. She has a complex operation to run from her lorry. She's a busy girl, always has been. Of course. Ruby's the lady driver in this great big jam mystery. Probably. You'll have to keep investigating. They'll never up open up anything about it. Just because she was gone for five minutes doesn't mean she magically got to the roof and shot the Merc. I've been through this. It's not plausible. He's been through it. That means he's suspected her too. All right, we're in. We got Ruby unaccounted for sometime during the window. This was crucial. Now let's place her on that roof. You guys' attention. Now, don't ruin it by making weird claims. Remember, you can still mess this up. Hmm. There's a secret route in the kitchen that leads straight out to the roof. How? He looks sincerely curious. Through what looks like an abandoned pinball workshop. People say there was a pinball arcade here sometime before the hostel. What was it called, Theo? East Delta Pinball Arcade, the old man coughs. Weird place. Went bankrupt. Okay, but... How'd she get up? There's no room for a staircase in this building, or an elevator for that matter. The elevator is outside the building. It's an old dumbwaiter used for moving pinball machines up and down from the workshop. From there, a door leads straight to the roof. You can just step outside. 
Ruby could have gone up, shot him, come down, all under seven minutes. That's quite the theory. Need to have a look at that secret passage, boys. I'm on it, boss. Right when the log clears me, right when the log clears, me and Angus are going up there. It's a dumb waiter, not an industrial lift. How about I go uh, instead of shush now? You got something else to back this route up, or is that it? Hmm. Guess what? Remember that key I found here? I don't like guessing, cop. No one does. It opens the steel door in the kitchen, the one that leads upstairs to the roof. This key, he looks at the hawthorn bush outside the window, was right here with you all the time. You didn't find it, but Ruby did, and that's how she got up there. Quit jumping to conclusions, Theo. He turns to the old man. You took that key. Did it look like it was recently put there? Oh, he's not saying... He didn't say that too, Theo. My bad. He said, quit jumping to conclusions. Theo, you took that key. Did it look like it was recently put there? The ribbon was old, faded. It had been there for 20 years at least. She could have just put it back there when she was done. Why? This doesn't make sense. It's damn interesting, but it doesn't fit well, and you know it. It doesn't fit well, but it fits, and he knows it. Also, it has to be said, this man would make a good RCM sergeant, or maybe even lieutenant. Just don't let him anywhere near women. I also found footprints upstairs in the old workshop. Footprints? Recent? The tracks were recent, but not worn down in the right foot like Ruby's. It's best to omit this pesky little polemic for now. Too confusing. Recent, but they didn't fit with any of yours on the scene, Ruby included. Goes against your little theory, doesn't it? Then again, I've known few people in my life who own more than one pair of boots and occasionally do change them. Good news is I'm still listening. Mm-hmm. Let's see. This doesn't matter. This is obviously ridiculous. Uh, this seems like it could be important. You do agree that the shot came from the roof, right? Why not? You can't draw a straight line into Clossier's window from any of the surrounding buildings, not from what I know about Martinez. Maybe from the coast. But like I said, I've been too busy dealing with idiots, so no. I don't think it was a sniper. It was close up. There's a 72% chance the bullet came from the roof. 72%. There's a percentage in all. Where did you get it from? You guys at the lab? Definitely a lie. The truth is not credible. Hmm. I analyzed it on the spot. Turns out I can do that. No, you can't. I know what you did here on the weekend. People talk, and what they say doesn't sound like a science cop. You're a madman. Those numbers were an ass poll, man. Yeah, and they don't put her on the roof either. It's just mumbo jumbo. He hasn't got shit. Hmm. Have you noticed the winch out back on the outer wall of the whirling? I've seen the winch. I'm not blind. Are you saying it's part of the elevator she used to get up there? That's right. It's one mystery down then. An architectural mystery. It doesn't much concern Ruby, does it? He knows it's something. He's just not ready to say you, you knew more about Ruby than he does. Yet. They were pinball machines still operational. The fuck does that got to do with Ruby? Just making an observation. He makes a gruff gesture for you to continue. Okay, I figured they didn't really have anything to do with it. Have we firmly established Ruby could have had access to the roof where the man was shot? Firmly? Firmly doesn't go well with could have. There's a route to the roof me and the boys need to check out. That's what we've established. Hey there, fart slave. Great name. Welcome on in. But a root does not put that bullet in his head. A gun does that. And Ruby doesn't carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least a shadow of a doubt in the shape of a gun. Hmm. There are weapons like this just lying around Mart Martinez. That looks antique, a bell of a grave. It's inoperable. Where'd you get it? There's a cellar under the bookshop. It was hidden there with others just like it. Twenty, maybe thirty rifles, Titus. Also broken, but still, there were too many. And there must be other caches, too. God damn it, we need to close that dump down for good. All right, I see your point. There's guns lying around. I thought we'd found all the old spots. Why was that still there? We just missed one. Ruby doesn't know this place, boss. Just these cops digging up shit. The local pawn shop sold my lost gun to a woman. Maybe it was her. You lost your gun? The blonde man is taken aback, not even laughing. 
What an idiot. The big man leans closer. Tell me, did you lose it before the murder? Yes. Don't die. No, you didn't. And Ruby didn't use your lost gun to kill him. Stop thinking about your lost gun, damn it. You'll get a heart attack. Yeah, apparently. This is uh, merely a thought exercise. He did not lose his gun. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I've analyzed the bullet that killed him. It was jacketed. So? So it had to come from a breech-loading rifle military grade. Not even you militia monkeys have those. He doesn't wait for a response. This goes against your short-range theory. If the murder weapon was military grade, how did Ruby get it? Wait, did he say you don't have big guns? You just showed him a breech-loading gun. I just showed you a breech-loader that any child could have. A broken old broomstick is what you showed me, but point taken. Time to really close the deal, show them the bullet. This is the bullet that did it. 4.46 millimeter. The Bell McGrave uses the same caliber. The blonde man looks at the mushroom death bringer in the evidence bag and says, Yeah, the bitch is jacketed all right. Four millimeter, too. Whoa. Well, goddamn. It's not proof, but it's a possible murder weapon close to her. Too damn close. You have been thorough, I'll give you that. There's a small 28% chance the shot came from beyond the roof. I know what 72% chance means. It means there's a 28% chance it isn't that, and 28 is no small chance either. Just making sure we're on the same page. It doesn't all fit. We're just sharing info candidly. Titus doesn't reply, which is probably a good sign. Anyone could get a gun around here. Ruby and I are pretty tight. She would have showed me the gun if she had one. She knows I love guns. Yeah, everyone knows Glenn loves guns. I don't know, Glenn. Ruby's a little secretive, isn't she? Wasn't she like she told you every little thing. Look who's finally speaking. Ratty's been uncharacteristically quiet since he started theorizing. Maybe he has something to gain from implicating her. He probably doesn't like her. Hmm. Classy said Ruby takes care of things. You don't do that without a gun in Revishal. She organizes things. She doesn't whack people. That's not the kind of person she is. She's a talker. It's clear this one is protective of her. Easy now, Glenn. What he's trying to say is people who don't have guns don't shoot people. You need a gun for that, and you can't prove she has one. You don't need to prove anything. Doubt is enough for now, and Titus must have some. I didn't say I'd prove she had the murder weapon, just that we need to find her. I don't know, cop. Why don't you find your lost gun first? The tattooed man bursts out laughing at his own joke. He's now Alice isn't comedy hour. Titus, we're not seriously considering it, are we? Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Phase three motive. The last component. The big one. Get this and they'll give her to you. Remember, don't piss him off. That never works. It's not a why did she kill him. It's why did she organize the cover up. I suppose you have a theory on that? She could have just been covering up for herself, Titus. Think about it. Why go through all that effort? It was her idea, wasn't it? The hanging? You went along, but she suggested it. She had like a fully formed plan and shit. Right when she came back downstairs. Really, Shanks? Classy wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. She was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan if I'd been first. Time for a logics demonstration. Hmm. Shanky, let's assume you killed him. I didn't do it, fucker. It wasn't my plan. You probably did, though. It's just a thought experiment. Thanks, Shanky. You killed him. You got up there, shot him, got down. Would you prefer to go on trial with your buddies as part of a lynch mob or alone for committing murder? Fuck you, man. I would never fuck my guys over like that. He squeaks with indignation. She didn't either. She would never do that. Why aren't more of you defending her? This is fucking stupid, Titus. Glenn, I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in the shit. Oh, so we didn't rule her out completely, and she skipped town. This is good. Maybe it's all part of a leadership challenge against you, Titus. There's no fucking leadership challenge. A flash of rage, but he calms himself. Just when I thought you were taking this seriously, cop, you put your head in your ass. Man, now he's just throwing shit against the wall to see what sticks. Okay, apparently that was the wrong choice. 
We've ruled out infighting. That's how this works, by exclusion. Remember, all we need to do is rule Ruby out. That's all this is. I guess I could have just... Anytime there's an option to choose, I just I want to see what happens. Titus, you have to see it. Things don't add up here. We need to talk to her. This is the only opinion he cares for. Yeah, I see it. There's one more thing I've been wondering about. Ever since you asked me where she is, add it to your list of suspicions if you want. I don't know. I don't know where she went. She just up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me where, however hard I asked. Want to know why? She was afraid I would tell you. Maybe she was right. By now, I probably would. She knew there's evidence on her, and she knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior. Why fleeing is always incriminatory. Perhaps. Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. When did she leave? Friday afternoon when he first arrived. Got where the RCM was in town, and she came in to see me and told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. She's scared of the RCM? No, you. As in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. Don't forget the funny tie, too. How can I forget? You know, when I first saw you limp in here, I thought she was paranoid or sniffing her own supply, but now I'm not so sure. What else did you tell Ruby about me? Or what else did Ruby tell you about me? She said you have a funny taste in clothes and that you won't stop unless you have something on her, or until you have something on her. She said she's heard of you from Jamrock that you're a human can opener, that you can play suspects against each other, open them up like cans. Fucking hell, Titus, did he just open Angus up like a can? Yes, he did. Now we can whine about it, whack him, or we can go on with our lives. I'm having a go on with our lives kind of day, Al, how about you? It's not an actual question. Anything else? Anything? Yeah, there was something else. She wouldn't tell me, though. I could see she wanted to. It was burning on her lips. This cop, Titus, this cop, he... But she was too scared. Everard has a file on you, but that's bogus. What she knows comes from, comes from somewhere else, from Jamrock. It must be real stuff. Do you have any clues on where she went? She's not far, we know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. Good fucking luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, Al, and we won't either. She's not really a hardy candidate anymore, is she? She's not, Glenn. Have you looked for her? A little on the coast. Where have you looked for her more precisely? More precisely, on the coast, past the water lock. She's not here, so I'm thinking there. Who's doing this looking? They're all here. You're all here. Who's out looking? Lizzie needed some air. The gardener, but she went to tell Everard. You're a smart cop, but you're a stupid person. No one goes to tell Everard anything. If he has to know, he has to know fast. It's called a radio, you believe. The gardener may have played you again when she stormed out. She has her own plan. Can you tell me where on the coast I should start looking? There's some shit houses there. A cinder block town. The fisher folk there refuse to unionize, so that's one place we haven't looked. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. We'll start there. One more question. What does she look like? Boyish. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a lorry man. It'll do. Shake his hand. His grip is firm and reassuring like holding a piece of unpolished granite. You should be a cop, Titus. When are you going to get through your dumb head? I already am. I just wasn't sure you were. And he still isn't. People are, aren't afraid of good cops in the, ray, in the way Ruby was afraid of you, he thinks. Then turns back to his men. Cool. Healed my morale from that. And I got an auto save. Yay. Man, okay. We have made a lot of progress all of a sudden. This is phenomenal. Um, so we got to find Clossier's buoy. We got to determine where the shot came from on Land's End, Boardwalk, and the island, and then ask the fisher folk on the other side. So let's head for the water lock. And a level up. Yeah, man, we got a skill point to spend. I've been kind of banking those where I can. I think it's a smart idea. Um, I'd like to go out the doorway. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Going well. You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours. 
Yeah, and? Notice how it came together without casting too much suspicion on Klossier. It was nice and ruby-centric in the end. What do you mean? Anything strike you a bit off about this mishmash? The bullet was jacketed. It doesn't just lie around anywhere, do they? The footprints in the pinball workshop didn't fit with the old soul's prints on the crime scene. So far, no one's mentioned hearing the shot. Oh, that's true. Notice how this hasn't come up at all. Even the Hardy and his boys didn't mention it. Neither did you. Huh. The footprints didn't match. No, they didn't. It turned out the bullet was an antique. Strange how you conducted the whole advanced ballistics analysis and then hand-waved it. The bullet was jacketed. It's rather rare these days, but do continue. The bullet didn't have to come from the coast. The roof, it could have come from anywhere on the coast. It could come from anywhere, but you're suddenly so certain it came from the roof behind the window. Okay. Finish thought. Just finish it and conveniently going on. She's watching you leave right now, you know that? Free as a bird on that roof. Lighting up a cigarette and thinking, I'm glad Ruby's in the shit and not me. Don't listen to this guy. The theory was solid. He's just jealous. Move on. It's no use harassing her further. I mean, I am skeptical. I'll admit. I will readily admit to that. Do I have another check for you, pal? Can I get my, uh... Vigilance, officer! My what composure? Can this do for you? Guess not. Alright, over across the water lock, I believe. Off I go. This is a pretty part. Yeah, I love how the thoughts can, like, argue with themselves. That's... The, the representation of the human psyche in this game is fantastic. Just A+. Plus. Oh, the one that was in Land's End in the northern tip of this peninsula. Okay, so you don't have to fill up all the traps. You just have to fill up the empty one on the northern tip. Understood. There's nowhere else to go from here. Do -do 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 -do. Oh yeah, Kim's still here, so I still I probably still haven't found somewhere to go on the coast, but I'm actually curious to see if I have. I don't want to go on a date. The waves are beginning to die down. Why does she care about the waves so much? What is it with you and the waves? What is it with the waves and fishermen? We need to be out there with them fishing, making a living, so I asked them to accommodate me. Cute. Oh. I think I found the place on the uh, on the coast, I guess. Well, I gotta get rid of Kim, though. We gotta come back here next time we're alone. And give it a try. Totally worthwhile. Um, let's see. I've already done the thing with those guys. Date Kim instead. That's a good idea. I think I'll go try to find the buoy. Along with maybe repla replacing the locusts. And then if I get lucky, maybe I'll find the uh, apartment I'm looking for as well. This is the church, though, and I don't think I have anything else to do with her. I think I have to wait until... Uh, I gotta get the filament first. That's right. Yeah, there's nothing else I can do in here. I can try to offer things to this, but I'm pretty sure I don't have anything else to offer away. Oh, visual calculus. I could put another point in that, actually. I have the point. I'm close to getting another level up, too. Fuck it. Let's do it. Because I just equipped the right stuff to boost this as well, so... Let's give it a go. Fuck that. Ah, man. It's so frustrating. Nah, I'm not gonna reload. I'll roll with failure if the game truly doesn't want me to discover what that is in an 83% fucking chance. Oh, did I swap the glasses back off? Well, damn it. I mean, it was still an 83% chance. I really was hoping I would get it. Oh! Money! Cool! Wow, that was unexpected. 
I must have just run right past that last time. You think this would maybe be where the buoy is, too. I still also haven't done this, but this is a red check, so I definitely don't want to... Uh... Oh! Could this structure have been used to take the shot? From here to the whirling? I can't see how. The church is in the way. Okay. I mean, if I open the door, I bet I can maybe find it, but... I really don't want to do that one time and then never be able to do it again. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Is that the trap? That might be the trap. Simply shoot through the church, of course. Brilliant. The reeds dance slowly around the empty trap. No insect sounds or movement anywhere. The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. Now that's done, when can we get to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? Don't answer that, it was a rhetorical question. He doesn't want to, but if there's one more cryptozoological runaround, he must force the investigation back on track. This better be it. I'd certainly like to discover something with that. Yes, churches are pretty holy, Bear. Ha <laughs> ha! Is there something here that would be an indi er, that would indicate a sniper using this place as a nest for taking the shot? Just some urban detritus, a bottle, and a dilapidated old comms tower. I don't see it, Lieutenant W. Freighter. I don't see a person taking a shot here and hitting something there in the whirling in rags. Maybe the campfire was used by the, by the perpetrator? To warm his hands before pulling the trigger? Perhaps, but anyone could have made this. The coast is specked with fires this time of year. Thankfully, this seems... Truthfully, this seems like a very poor choice to take a 1.2-kilometer rifle shot from. Visibility is awful. There's water vapor everywhere. I think we can rule out B double prime, was it? Maybe the assailant climbed the comms tower and took the shot there. It's not possible to climb that ladder. Even if it were, why? There's no platform up there to aim from. It looks extremely rickety and wouldn't help much either. What about the cigarette butts? Those? A smoking assailant who favors Timotriri to Astra or Druin? Cigarette butts are everywhere. This is a common brand for old men. Still, you felt it was important enough to make a mental note, and that meant something. Look over the water to the whirling in rags. Glowing light on the third floor. With binoculars, you would see a young woman's shape move behind the glass, her limbs long and slender. Huh. All right, then. No buoy over here that I can see, unfortunately. Nothing else to interact with, either. Hmm. Let me have a look at this again. Check the boardwalk. Oh, yeah, the boardwalk. Where's the island? How the hell do I get to the island? Hong Kong. Gotta find that. Oh, no. How do you say buoy? I didn't even realize there was an alternative pronunciation to that word. Boy. Boy. That's funny. All right, from the boardwalk we go. Uh, nothing. Perhaps from the edge? Over yonder? We can investigate this again. Hmm. There we go. It's a long way down to your death from here. 20 meters at least. Jesus. I forgot I wasn't supposed to run across here, but then I've just been doing it now anyway. Apparently that is not where we need to go for the boardwalk uh, perspective. Where would that be? I don't know. Oh, well, whatever. I have gone all the way down here, too. Yeah, definitely. Maybe this will yield something different. Kind of doubt it, though. This still gives us nothing. Let's see if there's a change Hello of things again. here. 
I'm looking for a suspect. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikhail here. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We just arrived anyway. Dude, I bet it was him. This is our fucking murderer right here. There's something friendly and familiar in how he says that. A day off. He's telling the truth. He hasn't seen anyone. Well, fuck. Never mind. Stigian sounds good. All right. I want to keep looking around over here, but I'm losing my faith that I'm on the right track to something. I'm trying to find out. Oh, wait a minute. Can I investigate that, or is that on the other side of the fence? An old ticket taker booth no longer in operation. People paid money to park here? All right. Um, can't get on the other side of that. Boy, oh boy. A door, a building, a hiding place. Could the instigator be inside? There's no way the perp is in here, officer. Look how scarred the boards are. All attempts to pry them off have failed. Can I try to get in, though? Not this time. The opposition is insurmountable. But I like the spirit. Have some points. <laughs> it's lonely and cold without points. And dangerous. Dangerous, too. Can you think she's in there? The suspect? God, I hope not. I can't see a way in, though many have tried. Points! Hooray! You better run over there, dude. We are close to another level up. Okay, let me think. It's unlikely in my mind that I find the buoy without having any sort of an idea of where to go to find it. So, instead of just randomly traipsing along the coast here and trying to discover that, I think I'm probably better off going to a specific place. I don't remember the time that I had to wait till. Let me see uh, what that is. 2200. So I still, I still got about four and a half hours in game time. Until I... Uh, until I need to go to that specific place. Oh, man. You have mistaken my question for a literal question instead of me thinking out loud, which is what the majority of this stream is, my friend. You see, as a broadcaster, I must provide commentary, and sometimes that commentary comes in the form of a question that I am not actually asking, but rather is simply me thinking aloud. Don't call. Don't call. Don't call Abigail. Quick reminder, don't call Abigail. What is the meaning of this emote? We saw ping the spoilers away. Hmm. Let me look at my list again. We've restocked the trap. Report to Lena. Buoy. Now that I know exactly where that is, thanks to the help of a friendly chat participant. Uh, go to Billy Mijan's apartment. Right, yeah. The apartment buildings in North Martinez. Where in the world are those? Again, not actually asking. Just wondering aloud. Uh, I've done this. So I can, oh, I can go back to Egghead. Let's go back to Egghead. That's a good idea. That'll work. How do we get back there? We gotta go down and around. Going back to Ryan, exactly. I gotta show him the new hardcore track I made. I look like some guy can make it, maybe investigate, but I guess not. Okay, they were by the church, which means I think they're down over here. Oh, shit, I didn't even look at that. I think they were south of the church, right? I'm pretty sure they were south of the church. 
So I think I need to go southeast, but I think I need to go like down and around something to get there. I think this whole area is a little bit messy to get through, but maybe if I go like this, and then I like this. No, this is, I, I went this way before. This is the way I went out to get to the other side. So instead, I think I need to go down here. Run faster, man! And then, uh, oh, here it is, I remember. Yay, I did it. Nice. Come on, get in. The warm stuff's sorry. You barely have room for one. Oh, he doesn't let the lieutenant in you here. Go ahead. I'm too old. I'm actually not, he thinks. I just dislike delinquents. Sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep he gestures for you to squeeze in. All right. Sounds good. Hardcore! The large-headed youth has closed his eyes, lost in the music. Sensing you, he opens them. Good morning, tycoon! Yeah! He shouts, apparently unaware of the time of day. I found this reel of tape. Maybe you could use it to hard up Ike's jam. Yeah, remix time! His voice booms through the church as he takes the tape and attaches it to the empty reel slot. Tape goes here into deck B! He clicks a switch and then tape starts spinning. A hand on his ear, he listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts. Wow! Did you get this from Anno himself? The great excitement is bubbling to the surface within him. This is big. What do you mean? Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? Oh, shit. Hear that? The signs match perfectly. Now, if only we had the beat for the full assault, it would be unbelievably hyper. Intriguing. The way I see it, Van Eyck based his remix on some famous original piece, like a folk song? Something local. Seems he found an initial part within the main melody. I think it's just happenstance, chaos and action, contingencies of our limited existence. That and Egghead's fantastic talent. Noid's right, Egghead's technical talent is the key. Now, this is definitely part of the same song, something cut from it. It fits too well. Something mysterious is going on here. Maybe Arno Van Eyck lives around here and just threw a part of his song away because he thought it was shit. Be how it many. Or be how it may. If it fits, it fits. Bring up the volume. What about the bass? Do you have any ideas for that? Yeah, I remember. You said it needs more bass. Nothing springs to my mind right now, but I'll see if I can come up with a solution down the lane. You're the warrior! The warrior of dance music! Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam's already pretty ultra. But it could be hyper hardcore! Alright, goodbye, Egghead. Day the birth generator's almost done. The question won't leave you. Why did the melody line from a broken and discarded tape fit perfectly into a song played by some speed freaks in a frozen tent? Could it be a coincidence? Maybe it's the hand of the machine man himself in his attempt to craft a perfect song. Maybe Egghead is actually Arno Van Eyck in disguise? Eyck? Egg? Hmm. Maybe I'll have to get that one. Alright, keep an eye out for the bass. That was important. That was very important. Now that Kim's here, we might actually have some different options with the girl, too. Let's try it. Hello again. Have you seen a red-haired woman around? No. Just no? It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast. Teenagers skulking around, gang members looking for a hole in the Union's defenses. Maybe Ruby too, but she wouldn't be able to tell from here. That's good. No neighbors to complain about noise when you get the club going. Exactly. It's our chance to turn the grim desolation into an overwhelmingly fun dance party. All right. Well, that reminds me. I could ask the uh, the other members of the village whether or not they've seen Ruby. That seems like a good way to spend our 
next couple of hours. Maybe the tent is full of farts. I mean, it almost certainly is. You really got some musk built up in there, I'm sure, over the over the weeks. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? You haven't seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the coast? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Because she's blind, which you seem to have forgotten. Oh, because you're blind, right. He's a sharp one, she says to herself and runs her hand across the washboard. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? I know how this world works, and it doesn't work when people tell on each other. You know something. We're here to help. Aye, that you are. Dark Omen. Help yourselves in your organization. Help the storm clouds gather on the horizon. I see. You know something, but you've decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others, too. Oh, shit. Zoke! Thanks for the 25 months on the pile. Welcome on back into the... Or, the, the, to the pile. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Enjoy your badge and emotes. Continued usage. As you look, the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of the floorboard next to it looks scratched. The hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust in here. Nothing in particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Something bad. Someone, someone's night thoughts. A last resort. A bad idea. You stick your hand and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then something hard wrapped in paper. A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. Interesting. Floorboard doesn't care, but maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded, ready to fight some cops. Holding the bullet, you get the feeling this isn't ammunition against you. It's for herself. Oh. Well, that's... Ter terrible. Electrochemistry. Yeah, I'm good. Alright. Been subbing since last decade. I failed to mention that. Thank you, Zoke, of course. Through all the years you've stuck around. Why is there a mirror in her home if she's blind? That's a valid question. Our tenant, the police. Why was there a bullet under the floorboard? The waves don't keep you up God night. damn that girl, what she murmurs softly. And without anger. A long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. A bullet. The lieutenant turns to you and gives you a little nod. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hit her things in there. She's usually a good tenant and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? Yes, I let that... I let my, I let my room to that ruby girl. It was very simple. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude, I've made it clear we welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday. Left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? She seems genuinely worried about her previous tenant. She's seen her hiding out from trouble before, but this seems different. It's for the police to find out. Right then, please answer each question to the, answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. You said she left on Monday? Early with the dogs, around 8 o'clock, I think. She probably heard the lieutenant's kanima drive by and it woke her up just like it did you. She must have heard your kanima. There's a downside of having a 130 kilowatt engine. It lets the bad guys know when you're coming. Is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it like I always do. Was there anything else there? No. The truth, sire. What is she like, Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. She rubs her cold hands together. 
At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation, so I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much during your last stay? No, she was mostly silent this time, kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back toward her shack, thinking, You could ask her about your hunch that it was a desperate measure. I have a possible explanation in my mind. I do tell. It's an exit plan. Exit from what? This. The lieutenant stops writing for a moment. He looks at you, then at the old woman. She tilts her head to the side, looking up at you deep in thought. And she makes up her mind. No, she's a fighter. She really believes that. Where did she go? I don't know, further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots and heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. After a moment of silence, she says, You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like a back of her hand. You only just arrived. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We're persistent. Further up the coast we go, then. Are you sure you wouldn't rather stay here and get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. The felled electric mural, you feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. Where did she go? That place is... Uh, I was really hoping she'd be hiding in this village. It's gonna be too much work for you to find her. Better for you to stay here, get a nice cozy fire heater going. Alright, if you do look around, please go easy on her. She really means it. It's an honest plea. She's a good girl, whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. Very interesting. Well, alright then. Looks like we're going searching up the coastline again. That was easy enough. Uh, this way, right? No, I can't go that way. I think there's only one way back and around there. Apart oh, wait, no, no, no. If I go down here... I think I could go this way, and this way. No, I'm lying. Oh, where am I going? No, that's right. Yeah, that just leads to the motor carriage. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go this way. Yeah, no, I know. I'm going to check out the mural, too. I thought there was more involved with that. That's a pretty easy one to get to, actually. I'll probably just head straight for that. Seems like the way to go. We go down here and around this one and go up like this. Down through here. Luckily, I've got the perfect outfit for jogging through all this shit. I do believe it's right here, yeah. Step closer. Above the mural, a collapsed roof. Broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rushing and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Felled electrical. How ironic, all these dark rooms. There's something in the wind, something the only way to go forward... Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Could Ruby be in there? In there? She could, or... She could be in the identical ruin over there, or in that boat shack in the church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? Listen to the wind. Made that awful call, found the empty trap. It's still an 8%. Shivers. I don't really get that often. This is a plus one shivers, too. Nice. Okay. Well, we have a plus three to shivers, so that's pretty good. I wasn't fully expecting that. Do, 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 do. Okay. Well, let's quick save and give it a go. This is a white check, I believe. Oh, give me an auto save, too. This is a white check. Yeah, down to, oh, up to 42% now. Holy shit, that made a big difference. Cool. Suddenly, all is quiet. There's no cold hand brushing against your forehead, no rustle in the reeds. 
the wind has died down or gone behind a corner. You can only hear distant waves washing the coast. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. What was I even attempting to do here? Trying to talk to the wind? The city? Whatever you thought would happen did not, and now you're just standing there with your hands falling to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire a trick for when you're out of ideas? She could be anywhere. How do we find her? How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. That's what I was hoping, too. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We already scanned most of the outdoor areas on our wild cryptid hunt, so we have an understanding of the geography, at least. And then there's the church. We've already scratched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step, too. Anyway, we do it at the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula and ask the locals enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. And if that fails, if we don't find her, and if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bunkers, storm drainage, this place. I'm sure it won't come to that. He looks behind him at the dark red box crumbling across the chasm. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. An adventure awaits. Nah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna level up. That seems good. I don't wanna search, I just wanna get this check. Thanks! Suddenly there's a sigh carried on the molecules around you, moving, flowing from high pressure to low pressure, like that of a woman emptying her lungs. She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath, flowing through it. Where does it go? In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase. To the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs. And then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels a whisper away. What is happening? She's down there! I think she's down there. Below this building. Okay, why? The wind told me. So how do we get in there? He just accepts it. The doors were on the collapsed side of the building. They're gone, basically. Finally, my time to shine. There's a ladder next to the sign. Perhaps we can climb them? Enter through the roof? Perhaps you can. We're not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. Sounds good, buddy. What's this thing? Well, the fucking phone was that yellow thing. I gotta interact with that real quick. At this point, he's conceded to your weirdness, and I approve. An old pipe peeks out from beneath the rotting boards of the boardwalk. Could this be an alternative path into the Feld building? A building like this must have multiple doors serving various functions. Perhaps a basement access. Your eyes slowly begin to adjust to the darkness inside the drainage pipe. The lieutenant looks over your shoulder. What's in there? A thin layer of snow gleams inside the pipe. Okay, what else? As your eyes adjust, you see some trash, crumpled up newspapers, cigarette butts. Someone has half-heartedly spray-painted skulls on the right side. And nothing. Broken glass from bottles thrown against the walls of a pipe. A syringe. This looks like a great place to stash narcotics. I want to make sure there's nothing hidden up there that children might pick up. Another stop on your crusade against narcomania. I was hoping we were in pursuit of a murder suspect. Can we get into the Feld building through this pipe? Given that this isn't a martial arts thriller, it's highly unlikely, and not without risk to our health either. However, the pipe suggests there may be an entrance to the basement around. The lieutenant pushes aside the reeds and looks around. And it's right here! <coughs> How convenient! A maintenance door! He points to a rusted metal double door to the right of the pipe, obscured by the reeds. Cursed Ilmarin die gives me a plus one to this. Well. Probably not going to get this one, but I'll go ahead and give myself the boost for it again. Physical instrument. What do I got for that? White tank top. I think that was literally the only thing. Because I've checked that before, and yeah, that's it. Still three. Whatever. You and the lieutenant lean all your weight into pushing the doors apart, but you're not quite synchronized in your efforts. They slam shut again before you can enter. Rip. Oh well. Do, 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 do. 
A rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Some of the rungs are missing. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Assess the situation. The distances between the remaining rungs are rather wide. You'd have to use the mounting brackets. However, they seem corroded and the peeling rust is razor sharp. In addition, the first rung is going to be tough to reach. It's what, three meters above ground and you're 180? 190, I'm a giant. All right, but still, the roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is gonna be hard. Perhaps if you were to not climb the ladder instead, what if we were to do something more subtle? What if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? Astral projection, be open-minded about this. What if I don't climb? What if I just teleport? Teleportation is not a thing. Teleportation is a thing. It just needs a bit of concentration. Okay, let's, teleportation is a thing. When you need some kind of scientific apparatus to create a teleportation field, you can't just do that without an apparatus. What are they talking about? The kid behind you whispers, asking his father. Teleportation, Mikhail. It's generally thought impossible. It won't hurt to try. Oh, yes, it could hurt a lot. He's restraining himself from using a parental tone with you right now. Teleport to the roof. 83% chance. But I'm not ready yet, because I could probably make it even better. How the fuck do I have an 83% chance to teleport to the roof? What the fuck? This is Savoir Fair, right? Chad is the one I'm looking for here. Or what was that? Hold on. Yeah, Savoir Fair. 92%. Just teleport, yeah. <laughs> what on earth, dude? All right. That's 92%. I mean, it's pretty good. All you need to do is close your eyes and concentrate. Darkness enfolds you. You can feel the distance between the bench and the first rung of the ladder. All you need to do is do it. Zoot zap pow crinkle. It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Bam. You f what? You find yourself on the roof, having mastered the art of physical displacement. I did it, Kim! I teleported! I just saw you climb the ladder, the lieutenant shouts from below. You just climbed it like a regular person. No, not like a regular person, like a phase spider. The wind at the top of the building starts howling loudly, blowing away the lieutenant's voice. <laughs> Faintly, you hear, Never mind! Find a way to let me in when you get inside. Don't go adventuring without backup, especially if you think the suspect may be hiding here. <laughs> Face spider! The central support beam has been destroyed by artillery fire. I think the devs didn't want to animate ladder climbing. <laughs> That's just this. Oh, a beautiful way of circumventing laziness. If that's the legitimate case, I would be thrilled. Not much going on besides just having to climb down here, I guess. Oh, Kim's definitely jealous, yeah. 100%. Poor guy can't teleport. Alright, cool, man. Made it in. What's this? Oh, it's another downstairs. The glass is covered with grime and dust. You can barely see out. A letter. Postcard Martinez 98. I think actually I've got a couple of things I could in interact with my in my inventory right now. I don't know. These are just a bunch of things I can sell. Do I have new interactions, maybe? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Let's go down here. It's got a lot of charm to it, absolutely. This game is charming as shit. 
genuinely hilarious most of the time. It's real good. You should take out your flashlight. That's probably a good idea. This collapse nearly sealed the basement. One can barely squeeze by. Antiquated office furniture. Brought down and forgotten so long ago. This overturned table is covered in orange mildew crawling with something. Fun. This isn't just glass. These are old computation components. These are computer components? Filament memories from the time when wires were cast in glass slides with an inlaid nervous system. How'd they do that and why? The how was a closely guarded secret. Something that was locked in safes and human heads across the river where they were manufactured. As to why, your fingers don't know. What about my brain? Ooh, that's nice. That's a nice looking jacket. No wonder it adds to our suggestion ability. But it looked fucking slick in that jacket. Ooh, cool. That's neat. Revolutionary propaganda on the bunk bed. Stale fabric smell and dust. No one's been here in months, maybe years. The same slit window you saw from the outside. Revolutionary's hat. Huh. Could this have been the killer's hideout in, the, in this narrow window, the point of origin of the shot that killed the mercenary? This does look like an embrasure, a slit made for shooting out of. Outside the window, the day is clear and as mild as can be in the early spring. Could this have been a good hideout for a sniper? It's a good place to hide, but it doesn't look like anyone was, has stayed here in a while. Is it feasible to hit a target in the whirling rags from this window? No, it's not. No matter how you crane your neck, you can't see the whole of the whirling in rags and certainly not the relevant segment of the top floor. Mustachioed and mutton-chopped man, amateurishly, amateurishly depicted, gazes at you with sad eyes. The plaque reads, K must off. There's a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait. Welcome to the bear pile. Seta! Oh, snap! Gifted subs, bear hugs. Thank you very much for that support, Seta. I appreciate it. Welcome, Welcome on back in. to the bear pile. How are you doing? Thanks for being here. The full head of hair matched by an ample mustache and sideburns looks a bit silly. Someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. Welcome Hands sweep across the, the sand, grains sticking to the frayed skin of the fingertips. An old man sits on a slab of concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Welcome to the bear pile. Interesting. Thank you for the bear hugs. Thanks for the subs. Appreciate it very much. Welcome to the bear pile. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Boot prints. One of the souls appears more worn. There's something in the air unnaturally buzzing. The tunnel collapsed. You'll have to find another way around. Buzzing sound getting louder. Feels strange. Money! Money! Yay! Hmm. Oh shit, whoops. I want to keep going this way. Oh! Suddenly your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. The static overcomes you. The darkness takes over as you feel yourself slipping into an unknown mute state. Oh, it's death. I told him not to go after the suspect without me, but it seems he wanted to play the hero. Oh, apparently I wanted to play the hero. 
Okay. Uh, I told him, say the people in chat who are so fucking proud of themselves. Good for you. Really, we gotta go through all this shit again. No. Come on, man. God damn it. You know what? Kill me. Do it. Fucking do it. I deserve it. Nope. Yeah. No. Not. Sure did. Sure happened. Sure it's just heartburn. Try to remain conscious. No. Couldn't manage. Just gonna have a heart attack. This is frustrating, man. I don't want this to be how I actually have to fucking proceed. This is, this is... Uh, God fucking damn it, man. Like, I, I recognize that the game warned me. I know that I should have gone in and gotten Kim first, but... Like, this is what I actually have to do if I want to get back to where I was. I got one more try at me, and then I'm, and then I'm done. Thank you. Quick save. Go look at the pipe again. I'm gonna try to give myself the boost to this again, but I'm just kind of anticipating that's not gonna work, which is fine. Certainly not expecting this one to. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Man, I got a really good look going on now. High quality stuff. Now my, my saltiness throughout this game the only time it's ever come up has been the instances where I just have to remake my progress, like repeat myself doing the same stuff I've, I, I have already done. And it's, it's uh, compounded by any skill checks I have to make again. That's really all it's been. 
And if the game would just autosave a little more frequently, then that probably wouldn't happen at all. Particularly after making big skill checks like that. It would be wonderful if it would autosave with that. But with it doing it this way, it just feels like, haha, you're being punished for mistakes. I mean, okay, never mind. Fuck it. I'm just done with that thought. Uh, let's make sure I have the right stuff on. So that's the situation. 180 seems about right. Let's be nice to myself. What if I just teleport? Where's your adventurous spirit, Kim? It won't hurt to try. All right. Good. Savoir faire. Now at least we get to teleport again. That's right. Cat Sensei! Thanks so much for the resubscription. Four months on the pile. Welcome on back in. I guess it's tr maybe trying to even tell me to quick save more, right? But that's just me being forgiving, I think, more than anything else. Is that a plus? No, it's a minus. I can never remember where anything is. All right. That'll have to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Zoot zap pow! Don't gloat. Just stand there like a Samaran master. You know, for the record, you didn't teleport there. You just climbed the ladder with your eyes closed. <laughs> that's where he says, don't forget to let me inside. So that's, that's where that subtle warning is presented to you. But I still am not actually even 100% sure how to do that. And why do I have to look at this from up here? What the fuck? That's stupid. All right. Down we go. Down we go, down we go. So how do I actually do this? Where where do I let Kim in the building? Not here, I don't think. It must be downstairs. Kim. Where's the door? It must be the... It's probably the service door. So I'm guessing I need to go down. Get my flashlight out. Do, 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 do. Thank you. Do, do. All right. Oh, there it is. Yeah, he's just standing there waiting for me. I completely ignored that part. Two rusty metal plates that slide apart form a crude door. Who's there? What do you mean, who's there? It's me, Kim. Stop playing around and help me get this door open. It's much easier from this side. The panel's on the rails once you dust the sand off. Or, yeah. With the help of your partner from the other side of the door is open with the creek. Hope no one dangerous heard that. You ready? Yes, yeah, time to investigate these passages. Let's move quiet and not make more sound. Not running is a great way to do that. Got it. They're trying to tell me things. They... I lacked the critical information. That's clearly what this boils down to. Alright, get these checks again. Hey Kim, look, old cybernetics. The lieutenant tilts his head, watching the light glimmer on the glass. So Kim not being here made me miss these options entirely. This is all that remains of Feld R&D? The rest of the building seems to have been picked clean. Could this be the part of the Feld playback experiment? These? No, these are all filament memories. I hope you're not expecting to find that device here. All you'll find is pain. Yay! New coat, thank you. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder if you can still have Kim and move quietly anyway through the tunnel. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty damaged. Could the killer have used this as a hideout? It's a great place to hide, certainly, but there hasn't been anyone here in ages. I can't see the whirling in rags. The shot didn't come from here. 
No one could get a clear view. At least we've been thorough. I like thorough. The lieutenant's voice betrays a slight disappointment, which he glosses over by reasserting control. Revolutionary's hat. Brush the dust off. Okay, let's go. Even that option changed. That's so interesting. Yeah, Kim does appear to need to be there for a lot of stuff to progress. All right, no running. I'll go ahead and quick save again real quick. Boot prints in the sand. She's here, all right. Mm-hmm. All right, take a slope. Half the game wouldn't be nearly as funny without Kim to play the straight man. He's absolutely a necessary component in the comedy. All right. A swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp, a strange tingling you can almost smell. Do you feel something, Lieutenant? A pain, a strange tingling. We should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. You don't really feel anything? No, but you're the sensitive one. I sure am. He trusts your gut feeling on this. We need to plan our step carefully. Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. You'll upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. We found out Everard's plan to take the harbor. Maybe we should tell Joyce about it. I'll leave that to you. Pardon me. I'll leave that to your judgment. You already know what I think about cross-pollinating information like this. He isn't quite sure. Maybe it'll yield something useful? We still don't know what she knows. We should find out. We got a date with the pigs and my gun. We cannot skip that appointment. Consider that 100% confirmed. I feel you'll need your gun for this. His hand rests on his holster. It's not enough. You need a gun in your hand, too. Your gun. I think whatever happens will affect our cryptozoologists. <laughs> I don't think this, I don't see how cryptozoology and the murder investigation are connected, but the situation in the city will get tense for everyone. How bad do you think things could get? We're not responsible for what we can't predict here, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. What do you think's waiting for us? Maybe more sellers? We've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. We've been sneaky. Either way, once we go deeper, there'll be no turning back. Well, fuck it. Well, we can go this way first. Oh, don't don't run. Don't run. Now this again. And do. Alright, there's that. Alright. Suddenly your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static, you hear a woman's voice. It's like a thousand radio stations being blasted into your head all at once, but her words are the only ones you can make out. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Says the shadowy figure by the machine. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But... Here we are. As she says the word officer, you feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathways. Don't cover him. Be a badass. I hurt my health again. That doesn't surprise me. That's an awful decision. Why would you not want to shield yourself from it? It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. You're under arrest! Really now? Check this out. She turns the dial in her hand. I'm just gonna die here? You're overwhelmed with a new surge of violent static. It feels like a blood vessel exploded in your brain. Are you gonna kill me too? No, I'm not gonna fucking kill you. If that had been my plan, you'd be dead already. I almost was! I considered, I'm being pretty reasonable here. No, I would have died if I didn't have drugs. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. <laughs> a pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. 
With a lot of these, you could force a radio signal grid on the pail, and literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pail, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with great effort. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. I'm not interested That's in a science class right radio. now. My brain is what being you crushed. Hear or think you're hearing local radio chatter. She's been holed up here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking, you just might get an opportunity to break loose. Have you experienced this yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. What's this goddamn pail anyway? Pale? It's the end of the world. How'd you get your hands on this thing? I built it myself. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But that, oh yeah, way beyond. She studies her death ray and the law officials trapped in it. This is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not cops, and of herself merely as prey. Will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like walking out of a very confusing dream. Please turn it off! If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. If you're looking for a deal on mattresses, oh, Rosaline, oh, Rosaline. Turn this. God damn it. She regards you and Kim with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She steps reluctantly out of the shadows and the pain lessens. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, not like the murder weapon. It doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Destroy the machine. Just keep her talking and you'll get through this. How did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets under floorboards? She found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. I'm gonna turn this down. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. She didn't rat you out, by the way, Isabel the washerwoman. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. You're desperate, aren't you? I was, before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor. I'm fine now. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Did you shoot Laylee? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. It was your girlfriend. She cracked. Ooh, that's a hell of a jump to make. Nah, she didn't crack. She's a survivor. If she told you anything, it was to save herself. She couldn't have known I was on the coast. How'd you find me? Your first guess wasn't entirely off. Titus and his boys, man, they told, you were, they told us you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon of professionalism, trying to make a clean cut of telling her she was betrayed. Well, fuck. And those guys liked me. I know it. This is what happens to people whom people like. And dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? Wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I opened them up. I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. But fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them a little. I do it by asking questions. And I have some for you. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. Strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. You have a gun. <laughs> did you leave any flowers for Classia on the roof? No, gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. They weren't just flowers. They're symbols of revolution. So now I'm leaving revolutionary symbols around? Come on. Classia was mourning. I never did understand why when someone dies, a hothouse's worth of flowers has to die too. 
So you didn't leave Maybells. No, I did not. Would you say that Laley was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. You don't feel sympathy for the mercs? It's hard work. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure, and I didn't like Wild Pines sending in these foreign hirelings, me and a fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate him, okay? I'm listening. You have an alibi for when he was shot? I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bother to impress that upon you. Ooh, 15 minutes, right? They said 15. I think they said 15. Yeah, and I'm sure they also made some funny remarks about it. They always do. I've driven a lot of long haul and chugged a lot of beer, man. Can't do either without some power of mind over bladder. And anyway, that wouldn't, have ta that wouldn't have been enough time. No one takes a 15-minute leak. Fuck you, man. I might have also stopped by the bar. Our investigation shows that 15 minutes was just enough time to commit the murder. Play pinball much? Not since I was 14 and hanging out at the only diner in Dardane. Haven't been into low-risk, no-reward games since moving to the city. Why? There's some mysterious pinball machines and some pretty mysterious rooms in the whirling. Yeah, they probably got some ghosts from the time of the Sue's raid. I'm not really interested in supernatural mysteries. What kind of mysteries interest you, then? Not murder mysteries, if that's what you're thinking. What about elevators? Do you like elevators? The fuck do elevators have to do with anything? Do you or don't you? Why not? <laughs> not even quaint old rickety ones? I'm not really into old shit for old shit's sake. So you know she's not an antiques enthusiast, not my jurisdiction, man, but it also doesn't like she look doesn't doesn't sound like she used that secret route at all. Look, there's a secret way from the ground floor of the whirling to the roof. Don't know it, but also, the shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there, no one mentioned. That didn't go super well, you gotta lay something better on her. You like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Clossier's rooftop. What's so great about her antenna? It's very powerful, I used it to tune into RCM frequencies, that's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? The view's pretty bomb, too, so you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? You have a gun. Where'd you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. That doesn't sound like the name of a real store. What do you think, I'm gonna squeal my gun supplier? Do you sell, in do you sell antique rifles on the side? This line of questioning is not going great. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. A breech loader? No, this is such a wipeout. <laughs> Never really got into weapons trafficking, especially not old weapons. What type of gun you got? A, not, a front loader, not really what you're looking for. That isn't it. Yeah, evidence. Let's take a step back. More questions before doing anything. Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head where I got to him, and there hasn't been any useful gossip on the radio. She's been staying up late listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. I can st still see him there in Classy's room lying on his side. He was still warm, but the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he had been dead for a good long while. Tell me your version of what happened Sunday night. She's refusing to adopt the demeanor of a cornered animal. A leader with no one to lead, she still wants to retain some control of the situation. We just want to help. Don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers. And Classy comes in all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink trying to steady her nerves and I grab the seat next to her. Did she seem high to you? Oh yeah, super, but I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. Classy has said you knew something was wrong immediately. I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. Wouldn't be a first for her, but no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was laying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like he'd been hanged. It's pretty weird that you managed to come up with this plan right on the spot. Faking a lynching was her idea? In cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once she- Dude, it's fucking classier. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. 
Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. That's bad that she'd be so calm. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or to be disturbed. You think she killed Laylee herself? As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. But even if this is true, weren't you worried that lynching might lead to war? She purses her lips. The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way, although I, the way things are going... Fuck it, I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. This is what she's scared to tell Titus? What do you mean, La Puta Madre? You! Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I can't do this again, man. I can't do it again today.